talk about February and March and why I think that that's probably one of the real critical times if you want to have an early green lawn. So I'm going to cover some important stuff. So hold on one sec. Hey guys, so you need to keep in mind with this video, you're going to have to adjust this based on where you are. So I'm in middle North Georgia, let's say. You're in Texas, you're in Florida, you've already got warmer temperatures, you're actually going to be a month ahead of us. So let's cover a few things that are really important. Number one, click subscribe, don't miss it because we've got a bunch of stuff coming up. But I just posted up the free Bermuda Lawn Guide for 2021. Over there on that website is also the calendar and the cheat sheet. The cheat sheet is new this year, it's something that you can share with your neighbors, a lot of times homeowners association. Um, it's just a simplified version for people that really don't know what they're doing. So, as you can tell, dormant Bermuda lawn, a little bit of poana going on here. I intentionally left some poana in different areas so we could kill it this year. That video is coming up. But I want to show you real quick, I want to show you Barb's front lawn. So Barb's lawn really has um, got good pre-emergent this year. They had lots of humid char treatments. Everything was done right. Now I'm going to show you the yard that's across the street. Now, new people bought this house this year and we sort of said, hey, we'll help you out. We went over there, the yard was 90% weeds and we started to work on it. And we got our hands on it a little bit late, but you can see that there's a lot of Bermuda already established and just a little bit of weeds. So we'll be going over there killing it. Now, some cool stuff coming up. Um, I've got a new tow behind sprayer system a tow behind spreader this year. Um, what else are we doing? Uh, we're actually, my son Ryan's over here working on the gardens, the new box gardens. We're doubling those vegetable gardens. Whole bunch of new stuff, but um, today I really wanted to focus on the keys, which is number one, start putting out your humichar. I'm gonna put out a ton of humichar on my lawn, and I'll probably put out a fair amount, on, a little bit on barbs too, but pre-emergent. If this is that window, remember, in the Bermuda Lawn Guide, and I did a pre-emergent video, if someone tells you March 1st is your date, go out two weeks before that with your granular, and come back two weeks after that with a light spray. And I put both those products on there in the description below. Those products will be listed along with links to the Bermuda Lawn Guide, everything else. But we are preparing for the Jumpstart program. What is the Jumpstart program? Well, it's in the Bermuda Lawn Guide. And it allows us to have a greener lawn before just about anybody else. Now, we're not pushing unnatural growth. That's the one thing you don't wanna do. You don't wanna come out and put a whole bunch of nitrogen on a warm season lawn. Eh, wrong answer. Cause you can get a late season frost come in and it's not good for it. What we're talking about is preparing the soil so that when your Bermuda or warm season grass, whatever it is, warms up, it warms up and it comes out of hibernation into a good environment. And the way that we do that is we apply humichar and we apply PGF balance. PGF balance. Um, two years ago, we were recommending just 10, 10, 10, but 10, regular 10, 10, 10 is just crappy. It looks like rocks. So we asked Andersons to come out with PGF balance, which is a super fine particle I mean, it's like salt looking. Super fine particle, 10, 10, 10, fast release with iron um, and some micros inside of it. So there's no other 10, 10, 10 that you will find on the market like this. Again, super fine particle for good distribution, all quick release, plus iron, plus some micros. That's what you want to put on your soil. So we're not really fertilizing the lawn at this point. What we're doing is, is all, all winter long, all of our nutrients have been leaching out. So we're gonna put down a bunch of humichar right now. We're gonna put down um, some of the 10, 10, 10, and as those two work together, the humichar will hold onto the nutrients and the 10, 10, 10 will sort of get that soil ready. So what's gonna happen is, is over the next month or two, whenever your lawn decides to come out of hibernation, it's gonna come out of hibernation in a very healthy, comfortable environment. And trust me, you will probably be a good two to four weeks ahead of everyone else in your neighborhood when you do that. 
Let me tell you, let's talk about other things to think about. Soil microbes. Soil microbes do not like cold weather. The, high, the, the peak of soil microbe production and um, replication is 70 to 85 degrees on soil temperature. Got that? 70 to 85 degrees on soil temperature. So don't even think about soil microbes right now. Do not use organic fertilizers, please people. Do not use a bio type fertilizer. You know the ones they make from waste products? Why is that? It's because those products have to be digested by soil microbes and then that gets released as nutrients. So if you don't have any real active microbial activity, they're not gonna work. They even say it on half their websites. You may see less, uh, less results in colder weather. Don't do it. That's why early spring and cooler temperatures, we always go out with a direct chemical fertilizer, period. <laughs> Nothing else. Get real hard on this. Now this is the fairway. And the fairway is annual rye. And yes, I'm gonna kill this off and I'll show that in the video. When I kill the poana, this will also die off. I gotta be real careful about my spraying because I don't want it to affect the green. But you can see, look at all this. I intentionally left this. This is what, this is what my lawn looked like when we bought the house the first year. Almost solid poana. And let me tell you what, that'll compete with your Bermuda in the springtime. And that's what you wanna kill now. You wanna get rid of that. Get rid of that now while we're still in that late winter mode. My son Ryan came out and we built, he built these boxes. We're gonna be installing these boxes all the way down this fence. We'll have probably another box or two down here. And then he's over here cleaning up. Man, they look so good. What a difference. Cleaning up all these garden beds, taking all the crap out of there. <laughs> I got a whole bunch of crap coming. Keep coming, Amazon. Come on back, come on back. <laughs> <sighs> That's the first load and UPS is still coming today. It's really important to make sure, so many people like, I tried to order your product and it was out of stock. Well, that's because you waited to the day before you needed it. You've got to start thinking ahead on your products. In other words, I've already got, <laughs> I've already got my pre-emergent. I've already got my PGF balance. It started coming in. My human char is coming in, and let me show you real quick what we're doing to get ready for springtime. These boxes all came last night. I've got more boxes over here. Then we cleaned up this area, and we're starting to stack the lawn care. I'm taking care of basically four lawns this year, so we're stacking up all the product here. We actually came over here, and uh, my son Ryan came in and installed a secondary shelf down here on these wood benches we made. So now I have a nice little charger shelf. All the chargers are going down there. For a little experiment I'm doing with you, and this is on Dirt Booster, by the way. So soil microbes, we talked about don't using, not using uh, organic-based fertilizers in the spring while the temperatures are cool. We have tried to get some kind of microbial action going. We're looking at 45 degrees soil temperature here, and it just will not happen, plain and simple. It's just not. They're there, they're alive, but they're just not in the mood to replicate. So I'm gonna go back to an old pile back here and see if it's warm enough that I can actually get some of this stuff going. So Hold everybody on. has a crap pile somewhere. Behind our fence, we just dump all of our yard waste, lawn clippings, garden crap. We just dump it here. It really isn't even a mulch pile. And I'm wondering if it's warm enough down there and protected enough that I can actually get some microbial activity going. That's what I want to check. This might be cool. Fifty-five, fifty-six degrees, but I'm gonna give it a shot anyways. I'm just gonna take some of the dirt booster, throw it in there. The microbial pack. A little bit of cow manure from a bag. More of this, maybe some of the natural material. Oh, 
Maybe boost it. I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to cover this over lightly just to protect it. And then we'll come back uh, tomorrow and we'll take a look and see if it's activated. So what I'll do is tomorrow I'll come out here and I'll shoot the results of this and I'll put it on the next video. But basically what I'm trying to do is, is, is there a place, uh, especially like for if you're going to do seedings or stuff where you need to get some kind of compost and microbial activity going quickly, can we just take a crap pile like this, just an old clippings pile, and use it to help make some super compost? That's all I'm doing. So anyways, get ready for the spring. Order your stuff now, guys. I can't stress that enough. Order your stuff now. Uh, so that you're not caught off guard. Good time for cleanup. We'll be doing oil changes, equipment prep, all kinds of stuff. Hit subscribe and I'll talk to you later. Doc.